Hello there everybody and welcome back to episode 3 of my tutorial series for Songs of Six. Today we are going to go over many cool things. For one we will be talking a little bit more about the food topic as it is a very important one in the early game. We're going to start repair our buildings with the janitor and we're going to start sciencing things and we're also going to start talking about trade. So there's quite a lot of things on our table for today and let's watch our hunter being finished. Like I said, I have taken some fast forwarding here and the hunter building is seeing its completion. So we have now again a minus seven on the workers as all the eight hunters that can work here, want to work here immediately. We, tie, uh, we tone that back entirely. I want to repeat here as I did this in the last episode, in my opinion not ideally, a smaller hunter is totally okay. As the hunter does eat up a lot of furniture, it is often wise to just build two workspaces and then finish the building and if you need to, expand it once you have the furniture. Here I was really waiting for a quite long time for that to be finished and that wasn't necessarily a bad thing as it opened up the um, next topic here that is quite important so the buildings when you check out up close you might notice it or you might not notice it but the ground is a little bit dirtier and the buildings are degrading so degrading buildings are less efficient that's pretty much it so to change that we need a janitor you will find him here in the magnifying glass menu I think he is somewhere in the logistics or administration area. Well, there you got me here. Caught me red-handed. I don't know where they are. I quite often... Uh, ah, yeah, here they are. Right before my eyes. So here are the janitors. I, I often like to use the magnifying glass menu because it's way more accessible. Now, janitors were in the previous versions... Um, buildings that had a fixed size and all here we can create them manually again with the v65 i put in a couple of workstations here as you see here we can host a lot of janitors just with very low amount of buildings so you don't need to grow that huge we put in utilities so these fine folks can work faster and basically that's all that it's to, that is to it i just want to explain how these guys actually work. Your janitors will be the people repairing the degradations on the buildings automatically once they are employed. By the way, talking about employment, let's hire a couple of workers and quickly about the janitors before we handle this. Janitors repair your buildings if the materials are available the building is being made out of. So if a building requires furniture, you require furniture rep to repair it, and that goes through the entire game. You need the material that the building is being made out of. Unless something has changed, but I haven't seen anything like that. Now, with 40 people we received a new title and now we have the right to import and export. In the previous versions you had access to that way earlier, but I personally like it this way a lot. So, uh, while our janitor is being built I want to address the homelessness. I meant to do this here. These guys are homeless for quite some time, I'm very sorry for them, but I left their homelessness for this episode. So as you click here, you have a lot of information that's not too important right now. The important information here is that you see that there are a lot of cyan and uh, dark blue squares and yellow squares. The yellow ones depict where people require a home, but they don't have one currently. So we see that our housing needs to be in the vicinity of the carpenters and the fruit farmers. This way you can always find out where you need to build your houses in case you don't know where to put them. And that can be quite easily the case because it ain't that obvious without these tools. So we put the houses right next to the lab and... Oh dear. Yeah, I, I did something wrong here. So we want to refurnish this room and call out that it's supposed to be made out of wood. As you see here, we have mud walls and these take quite forever to build. Your workers will 
continue where they started with the um, other materials, but the rest of the walls will now be wooden, I guess. I don't know. Well, whatever. Mud walls have the advantage that they don't cost you any materials, and the disadvantage that they take forever to build, as you see there. Wooden walls are, or wooden elements are created much, much faster. So, well, seems like this building is a uh, amalgam of mud wood here. Okay, whatever. If it works, it works. As you notice here, our wood stockpiles are falling. In the early game, that is a very, very common thing, as it is super hard to have the necessary furniture to get everything done at once. Therefore, we are going to build ourselves now in the... Uh, where is it? Logistics area. One import and one export that will... Because that will allow us to start trading things, and this is where the fun starts. So, I'm gonna put these right next to the um, big warehouse. It does pay off to have your import and export depots next to your logistics, as these items are being transported from the warehouse to the stations and from the stations to the warehouse. I think that is pretty much a no-brainer. So, let's get to the hunter. I have been uh i wanted to do first off this one here you create three units of meat per employed hunter here so let's take a second in the past the hunters were people that were hunting the stuff on the map and they were a finite source of food this is no longer the case hunters are now an infinite source of meat and this is a really really powerful source of meat and basically if you are new to the game i totally recommend you to invest into hunters first and foremost if you just want to get your people fed the big downside is that you are completely unable to put up stockpiles with meat you eat what you have and your yearly production must feed your people otherwise people will start starving but a model like i have it here is way more than enough i've been asked how many uh, people should work in your food industry that's a pretty tough one i personally like to say that farms are really something i usually only build when i have a lot of people already running in the city as these are best served on a high size with lots of workers and these small farms i personally don't like them too much i did build them here in the tutorial series though to show you how it all works but my personal favorite are farms that are exactly at the limit of the allowed building size so you get the most out of your building squares so to resolve the question how many workers you should put into your um food industry until it is enough to fa feed your people sadly in the current version of the beta the indicators of the farms are not right so you need to calculate it for yourself basically here for example this farm here produces two food per day as it yields 37 fruit last year and you just need to divide it divide this number by 16 and you have the yearly output it will be fixed soon and uh, it might be a very good uh, well the case that when you are watching this series that these indicators here are totally right currently the beta what should i say it still does not um mean too much overall if you notice that you produce too much food at some point even though the indicators here are different because i don't know if it will stay like that i personally look at it like this if i have too much food i just export it if i still have too much food and i want to export something else i put workers from the food industry away into something else but it's never a wrong measure to have too much food, like I said. Stockpiles make people happy. So the question was how many people should work as a part of your society? Well, I think a third to 50%, depending on your situation, depending on how efficient you are. The thing is, the longer we play this, the more efficient we get. Talking about that, we are going to go and 
allow our people to build a lab next. So we are going to activate this job so the lab can be constructed. In the meantime, the janitor is seeing no completion. Oh, is that bug still alive, is it? All right, sometimes... So that's our neighbors just saying hi. All you need to do is accept. Sometimes your workers forget to complete a building. All you need to do is just uh, click in there, tell them to refurnish and uh, press the check mark again. This is a bug that has been around, I don't know, since many versions. And I, I know that this is a quick and easy fix to resolve that issue, or at least it was. I hope it still is. So... As a uh, common rule of thumb, as long as they are working on the building, everything is okay. So, yeah, here you see, materials are being deposited, people are still working on it. So, in, in case you ever see a frozen building in your city like that, this is an easy way to fix it. So, our neighbors are saying hi, that's a very good thing to see, because that means they don't wait, want to wait war on us. Alright. And so what's happening now is that nobody is working too much on the construction side anymore because we have too many uh, odd jobs issued on the uh, foraging side. And the janitor is ready. Beautiful. So I'm going to unemploy some hunters as I see enough workers are here. Neighbors say hi. And the janitors will know if you click it, go around and fix these red spots everywhere. And you see we have already allocated quite a lot of these. And you also get a readout if any resources are missing. And most importantly, if you zoom out, you can see how far a janitor's uh, workspace is reaching. So this is basically the zone where your janitor is capable of doing things. And after that, you need to build a new one. I don't know if you still can reduce the size of their area. In the past, I was able to do so. This might have been removed. I need to check back with that. For starters, it is enough to know that these guys prepare stuff inside this radius, and they don't cease doing so until um, they are missing some resource. Missing resources are the number one culprit of your janitors not janitoring, if you have that issue ever. So, we have now also our export and import depot finished. So now we are capable of selling off our overproductions. To do so, we are going to go over here into the export depot. And I'd say we got so much wood that we are well off selling that a little bit. So over here, we now see the settings. This bar is the most important one as it defines how much of our stuff we want to sell. I want to sell only here. I only export if my warehouse stock is above 90% of the total capacity. Since we are currently always in the red, that means on the maximum capacity, we're going to sell off whatever is too much. You can also sell off the spoil rate. That's also a pretty foolproof way. Either way, we're going to keep it like that. Next step, you select your trade partners. Over here, you see how much every trade partner bought. Uh, is paying for one unit of that good. So these people pay four per wood, these will pay three per wood. You click them and then you offer them a trade relationship. At first, many of these people want something from you before they start trading with you. So for example, these guys want a big freebie of my wood and some of my denarii before they accept. But that's okay, I'm taking that as we have now a permanent trade agreement. Here these guys would want way more from us and we don't want to do that. For starters, this is more than enough. We can work with that and now our workers will start exporting the wood that is too much in our possession. We can also auto employ a couple of people here into the warehouse and assign a couple of crates here as well. So we will have a bit more storage available. Alrighty, so checking back here we can easily see that our city is thriving so far. Like I said, with the farms, you have to check back a little bit by yourself. Here, I can say that every one of these farms is producing roughly two per day. The veg farms are comparable. So this is all in all eight units of food per day. We got 18 
we got 20 so we are a little bit in the negative so we employ a few more hunters this way we can get the job done as well it's a little bit difficult at the early stages of the game to get a good measure of how much you need but you'll be getting there i hope that the um readout of the units of the farms gets fixed soon maybe i'm just reading it wrong it might be also the case so help me out if i do something uh, if i do something wrong there please so one of the other things that I really want to put down here is now another will. We can increase the happiness of our city a tiny bit by increasing uh, the available services like these. Just like that, you create a smidge of extra happiness for a very, very low amount of effort. But all these things have, uh, they are finite, as I said before, you cannot put uh, down a service if the people already have enough of some. All right, so currently we're now saving our furniture and our wood for stuff. We are now also exporting denarii's because the wood that we're selling is earning us money. This is all happening fully automatically as, so, as long as one person is employed here. So we're now going to import ourselves furniture as I really feel like this is just what we should do. So I want to import furniture, as you see here, until we are at the 50% mark of all stockpiles or whatever pleases you. I'm gonna go for the 100% check mark. I have no problem with all my denarii right now being reinvested into furniture as that makes things go, for, uh, go forward much, much faster. And I strongly can recommend this move as it is very cheap, powerful, and speeds up your construction by a lot. Because as a matter of fact, early on, one of your biggest hindering factors is just the massive amount of furniture that you need. And the moment you unlock yourself the access to, to trading, I personally think it is a really, really wise choice to, um, to go for that. So I'm kicking out the auto employment on my warehouses for now so I keep a few more odd jobbers and I also go I'm also going to shut down the fishery now and employ hunters in favor as these are much more effective at food gathering compared to the other guys. We are now pretty much at a solid spot. I think we will get to the next level soon for ourselves. The only issue the city has so far is that we are on a on a permanent little shortage of workers. But that does happen quite often in the early game. We're gonna cut the uh, janitors here a little bit. Auto employment, by the way, is early game one of the most common culprits in terms of eating up your workers in other area in areas where you need your workers elsewhere. So micromanaging them there is a really wise choice. Another thing that we're going to do is I'm going to tune down the amount of um, carpentry workers now as we can simply just chop wood to sell it off to our neighbors and earn our money with that and just buy that furniture. It is a really nice trick as the imports here will be done again automatically and all we need to do is wait until ordinaries are spent. And there we go. As you see there, we will then have fresh imports rolling to our city quite soonish. This way you can easily earn yourself money. Wood exports are really nice in the early game in cities that have access to forests as the stuff just regrows. All right, our lab is done. It hosts almost 40 people. Oh, it does host 40 people. We are not going to have that many people employed here. We are going to employ four scientists at the beginning because we need to have them working permanently. Science in Songs of Six is a resource that does decay. That means if you are not maintaining researchers, they will forget the knowledge, so to say. Therefore, you need to make sure that your scientists are permanently working on their science and also the buildings are not deteriorating, stuff like that, it's very important. So 
in a nutshell, the statement here is, if you want to do science, these people you put in here, they will remain here for an indefinite amount of time. So it is now time for our people to get some quality of life and that's in form of a lavatory. This is where people can go to fulfill their humanly needs, and this is also a real powerhouse in terms of happiness generation, pun intended. So, all you need to do is have furniture and build that building. It's another one of these wonderful buildings that add in a lot of happiness into your city, but they do cost you furniture and therefore are a little bit difficult to put up in the early game. You need basins to um, some degree. I haven't fully understood yet what a uh, lavatory with not sufficient, not a sufficient amount of lav um, basins does. But at the end of the day, my personal approach is always to just crank these things up to 100% and... Uh, move on so the lavatory is the next step of my plans to make create a larger amount of happiness in my city as you see currently the immigration is stagnating this is a pretty common occurrence and will happen to you quite often as you are waiting for new people you will always get this done by creating more service buildings or duplicating service buildings where they are necessary. For example, here I felt like putting up another hearth might be a really good choice. You always will keep doing things like these. All right. So here our consumption rate is being covered entirely by our meat production, so all the veg production will be a nice product on the side. And after that, once I have the feeling that my veggie production is at a point, or if veggie and fruit production is at a point where I have more than I need, I'll be just starting to export meat as this yields a nice amount of money. Alright, so we have now our first 50 points of science down. So you click in there and you can open up the technology tree. So here you have a lock on many technologies as these are either unlocked because uh, locked because of a lack of tech or a lack of rank so if there is a padlock on them you cannot unlock them yet because you have to unlock something else first in a case like this here we could unlock them so here hunting is one of the technologies that helps out a lot as it increases the output of your hunters we are mostly after though the civic technologies here so Technologies like proper burial and entertainment are massive, and we're going to go towards these as our first bigger milestones. Here the system is really easy to understand when you know that science points are decaying. You need to maintain the science, otherwise you will forget your technologies again. And if that ever happens, that you don't create enough science, your technologies will decay and get reactivated once you have enough science again. That's the fro uh, and that's one way to, to save yourself if your city is spiraling out of control. Another thing is that frozen technology Whenever we want to invest our technology somewhere else, we can also willfully forget about a technology, so to say. This, though, comes at the price that the technology points are temporarily locked, frozen. So that's what this wants to say. All right. Getting a little bit nervous around my food stockpiles, but that is really just because meat is deteriorating to 100% each year. That's what I said, it is not really possible to put up stockpiles with this kind of food, but it's really not that kind of a big deal as we are producing enough on a daily pace. I am forcing the construction of the lavatory as the very next thing, as I want my city to grow. I could also offer the woodcutter, but this would bring the problem that a woodcutter needs workers to be offering any returns. So the buildings that you create, you should always orient yourself towards the question, do I need workers or do I need um, some place where I can put my workers? So in this case, we needed some place 
we needed uh, workers and the lavatory will provide a boost of people. We are going to open up the construction of the market now next, which is the next consumer of um, furniture. And you see, we're getting all furniture in quite quickly now. You can also click on these goods and you can see here how our furniture income is composed out of. And here we see the first 32 pieces have been imported. And we still have quite some denarii. And that's because we are now selling off all the overproduction of wood and reinvested into furniture. And like I said, get started with that business as fast as you can, as it will really power up your um, economy by a lot. So, this way you can build the buildings that you require much much faster and that does mean so so much in this game and here you see lavatories go up happiness and loyalty go up at the same time another nice trick that you can go for to make your people happier is to go into the access menu and provide them wood for their housing they will have now the allowance to pick up logs that are available and get them into their housing and you will automatically see how they start upgrading their housing or well, after a while you can give them access to all manner of different things and they will all use that to furniture their houses and that will make your people extremely more happy at this point of the game it's all about maintaining more happiness for your people and creating a nice stockpile of food as this is always the uh, biggest metric for your citizens to maintain their happiness about. The Kratonians that we're playing here right now are also most about vegetable, fruit and bread. So if we provide meat, this is not the kind of food that they actually really want to have. It is more like if we have to eat it, you get the idea. So, therefore, we are going to use our trade and all these things in the upcoming episodes to balance out the issues of that city even more. As currently, you can see that the loyalty goes down, but that's mostly because people are afraid that there will be not enough food for them. But that's nonsense. We provide more than enough food for everybody. It is just like deteriorating insane, insanely fast but there will be a harvest up ahead of us that will resolve all the issues but here you can really see quite well how the ebb and tide of this game works as we have now come on starving subjects that cannot be so let's see Seems like there is a hiccup in the uh, displays here. I'm very, very sad about that. I mean, it can't, it won't last long. Nobody will really have to starve as there is uh, vegetable all the way. And there is sometimes a phase where people are needing to pick up their food. I'm actually quite happy that this happened as it uh, documents quite well what can and will happen if your food stockpiles go too low. So this city clearly needs more farms and more food income or you can alternatively use your technology to crank up your production as we will do here. We're going to just invest a few of our technology points to make hunting stronger and this does increase the output of our hunters. Our people here, the Kratonians, they don't value meat too much, but it is at the end of the day something they can live off if they have to. They are depicted as vegetarians in the game's lore, but they um, they do eat it at the end of the day. Here you see it gets consumed. If they have to, they also consume meat. Now, that puts me to the end of today's episode. We now know the foundations of science. We will crank up the science output in the upcoming episodes even further. And of course, we need to create more food as we see. There are various ways and means to do so. I'm going to show you these in the upcoming episodes. Until then, I gotta say thanks for watching yet again. We will continue this series next time and I hope you enjoyed yourself. Feel free to leave a comment. 
many, many thanks for leaving uh, many comments before. I really am happy about what we've had so far communications-wise. And of course, a thumbs up and a, and a subscription would be really, really nice. And last but not least, check out the description box. You will find the playlist link to this uh, entire series there. And also there is a link to Patreon, Paypal and buy me a coffee. I'd be really delighted if you'd give them a look. And a big, big thanks to all the supporters out there. And a big, big thanks to you watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. See you all next time. Have a good time.